Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 19, and today we're starting to talk about the effects. So Diva comes with two FX slots, and in each FX slot, you have a choice of five different effects, those being a chorus, a phaser, a plate reverb, a delay, and a rotary. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the first two. We're going to be talking about the chorus, and then we're going to be talking about the phaser. So for this demonstration, let's go to a init preset by right-clicking the display, selecting init, and then let's bring down the second oscillator and the third oscillator over here. And then let's kind of open up our cutoff just a little bit so we have something kind of like this. So chorus is probably the easiest concept to understand. So chorus creates multiple copies of the signal and changes the time and pitch using an LFO. For this one here, we have three different knobs. We have rate, depth, and wet. So take a listen to the dry, which is this, and then the wet. Now this rate is going to determine the speed of that LFO. As we crank this to the right, we can notice that this, the movement gets a lot faster. And once we start approaching the top end of this rate, especially with a high note, we kind of get that B high type of sound. And that's only with one oscillator. If we introduce the second one, or the third, get something kind of crazy like that. So let's take these ones out of the mix and go back to just the first one. Next up, we have the depth over here. So this is the influence of the LFO, higher values, higher the effect, basically not too complicated. So take a listen. And then the wet over here is basically the mix of the dry signal and the wet signal, the process signal and the unprocessed signal. So if this is too much chorus for you, you might as well back it off and bring this wet knob down a little bit. So something cool about this effect here, so let's double click all these back to default here. So in this chorus module, we have a couple different types. We have classic, dramatic, and ensemble. Now, the real cool ones, in my personal opinion, is obviously classic, but the really cool one is gonna be ensemble. So if we just have one oscillator going like we have right now, and take a listen to the different changes in tonality between classic and ensemble. So this is classic. Now ensemble. It can really take one oscillator and just make it pretty huge. So take a listen to this dry. So it's a saw wave. It's cool, maybe kind of a little boring, but that's all right. Now with just that chorus, the default settings, and the ensemble, we can really make a pretty cool sound with just one oscillator, so not too bad. And then let's take a listen to the dramatic. I mean, it is kind of dramatic, so I guess that's a, an appropriate title. Okay, so that's pretty much the chorus. It's not too complicated. So moving on from there, we have the phaser here. So phaser is kind of interesting. So when you phase something, it's sending a copy of the signal into all pass filters, causing phase changes. The signals then mix back into the original signal, creating constructive and deconstructive phase changes, and it's moved by an LFO. So if that doesn't make sense, bear with me here. We're going we're gonna to get through this together here. So what's kind of cool about this one here is we have a rate and beat. So let's take a listen to just see at first what a phaser sounds like. So this is dry. And this is on. And we can see the changes of the cancellation, the phase cancellation happening right over here. Now this rate slash beats knob here basically moves the speed here. So take a listen to this. Now as we see, this is a rhythmic motion here. What's nice is if we select sync over here, now this is going to be in beats. So if we have something maybe kind of down here at the bottom or something like that, it's gonna move really fast. But let's say we go to something like one. And let's turn on our click or arch some drums. So this is going to be keeping this in time in beat with our song. And 
then over here we have depth. So basically depth is adjusting the modulation amount of the internal LFO. <laughs> Next up over here, we have this LFO phase. So this adjusts the phase of the LFO from zero to 360 degrees. But keep in mind, this LFO is in free running mode. So a nice easy way to visualize this, let's turn this sync on, let's double click this back to default. So we can see the motion here, let's maybe make this a little bit faster. something kind of like that. So as we move this LFO phase, we can kind of see this, this waveform changing as we move this knob here. So as we move it, it's kind of breaking it out of its cycle there. So yeah, kind of interesting to notice there. Next up, we have this center here. So this adjusts all the delay time. So an interesting example of this, let's double click these all back to their defaults in case we change anything over here. Okay, looks like we're good. So let's go over here to the depth. Let's turn this all the way down to zero. Let's turn our feedback all the way to the top and take a listen to this. Now this feedback knob here as well is kind of interesting here. So basically what's happening is the output of the all pass filters is then again fed back into the all pass filters and that sounds to us like resonance. So the more we increase this, the more we see that resonance starting to get boosted. So let's move this depth up a little bit so we have something moving. So you see how now right, now right here it's very bright. So if we turn this down here to the left, it's basically now kind of cutting a hole. Whereas we turn to the right and that is creating a resonance peak. So last up here, we have this stereo knob here. Now this is a bipolar stereo with control and it sounds very different in the different modes here. So right now we are in stone and there's also one called flanged. So take a listen to this one here. Maybe put this back to its defaults. I'm gonna see how that sounds like in the flanged mode. And keep in mind, all of these knobs function the exact same way. Just over here on the type, it's just a different sound of, of uh, phasing that we're gonna get. So even in that last example where we have depth at zero, we have quite a high amount of feedback and we move the center knob. Right, we get that sound. If we go over here to flange. We get a completely different tonality and it almost sounds a little bit like a formant filter. If we go back to stone. Maybe sounds a little more sci-fi, more alien-esque. So yeah, that's basically the phaser and the chorus in a nutshell. If there's any questions you guys might have, please let me know in the comment section below. And hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.